What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another Tottenham update video to bring to you today. Fabrizio Romano was busy last night on Twitter, as was Sky Sports as well, Sky Sports Italia, bringing us some really, really interesting news. Uh, and apart from that, Di Marzio as well, uh, bringing us some, an interesting picture of Steve Hitchin with Milan Skriniar's agent out in Italy yesterday. Uh, Fabrizio Romano and Sky Italia also backing up those um, those reports from Di Marzio. Sim, uh, what do you make out of them? Yeah, it's quite interesting the developments coming out of uh, yesterday. Romano saying um, Spurs are still in talk, still very interested in a deal. But on uh, but Inter Milan are asking for sixty million and Tottenham won't go as ha that high. However, there was a different journalist. I'm not sure what was, what was his name. Or in, who also works for Sky Italia. He, I think he's more like a works for like their news channel, mm -hmm. uh, a bit like a Sky Sports news journalist. And he was saying that Tottenham are actually closing in on agreeing a deal for fifty million euros plus add-ons for Skriniar, and they're actually not far away from a deal. And if that is true. That would be absolutely. That would be very impressive. I'd be very, very impressed if Levy's actually going to shell out. 50 where is Daniel euros. Levy? And who, it where, can't be true. It can't where be true. is Daniel Levy? And, and if this is the real Daniel Levy, who's done what to him? I don't know. Where is he locked in a basement <laughs> and someone else is controlling the funds or something? I don't know. Someone kidnapped his family. I don't know what's going on. But he seems to be releasing the funds somehow. Um, the news today from Dan Kilpatrick of the Evening Standard, who's usually quite reliable, he said that um, any deal involving Skriniar or Ruben Diaz is very likely to involve swap deal, swap uh, swapping players or swap deals. So um, whether it remains to be seen um, how serious this 50 million euro bid, uh, if it's true, if it's actually going in, and if uh, Inter Milan are going to accept it. I get the feeling that if Inter Milan gets somewhere near 50, they will accept. I can't, I can't see them holding out for an extra 10 million euros for a player they don't really want and a player they've already lined up a replacement you for. You know, there was rumours on Sky Italia last night that saying we had already launched a 50 million bid. That's what I'm saying. That, so that's it's what, very uh, strange. I mean, that's what the, there are that's what we're saying. There are conflicting, conflicting reports. Alistair Gold hasn't come out and said anything that far yet, has he? He's only just said we were we guaranteed we're in talks. The good thing is that picture of DiMaggio that he took of uh, Hitchin and Skriniar's agent really shows that we are serious about this deal, which is something that we're, that's definitely in the pipeline. This isn't just something where we've called up and inquired mm. to the club. We're, we're meeting with the agent, we're meeting, uh, we're in Milan um, having talks. So this is uh, something very, very serious and hopefully we can get a deal over the line. I'll be super, super excited if we can get a deal over the line for Skriniar. But at the moment, still, am I convinced that we're going to we're actually going to bid 50 million? I don't know. I, I, can't, I have to see it to believe it, really. Mate, I can't after, quite believe it. After signing Bell, I'm literally convinced we can sign anyone that's linked to us in the press at yeah, the moment. It's, but it's incredible. The attitude towards transfers has completely changed since uh, we've got those signings over the line. But I mean, are we actually going to splash 50 million euros a week after signing Bell? Are we actually going to do that? This is my Tottenham Hotspur. No God way are we Trevor going to Birch, do that. God bless Trevor Birch, man. God bless him. <laughs> uh, but He's look, done something. But look, if we were to sign Skriniar, what, how does that impact us? And kind of what good of a deal is that? How good is that I deal? think we're getting a, one of the top centre-backs in Europe, personally. I think he's at a good age. He's 25, so he's not. He's, he's still got many, many good years ahead of him. I think in terms of defending, I think he's he'll, he might even be, a, in terms of pure defending, he might be our best defender mm. coming into the club. Well, I think he he can really rejuvenate our whole defence, a bit like how Van Dijk came in but, and completely rejuvenated their defence. Not only that, but he's a left-sided and he was also left-footed as well. So he just He's actually quite two-footed. He's he quite slots, good. Yeah, but predominantly left-footed. Yeah. He slots in perfectly there. You know, replacing Jan Vertonghen. You know, you're not going to replace Jan Vertonghen for anything less than 40, 50 million, are you? Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, to get the same quality or similar qualities. And so. I think it became very evident at the beginning of the season. I think at the end of last season, we had our defensive record was quite good. And I think it might, might have fooled a few people into thinking our centre-back options were good enough. Yeah, you know, the defensive record was quite good, but we were still sloppy there. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, wasn't we were good, but we we're kind of getting over the line. We got did get a few decent clean sheets and stuff, but it's been become very evident at the start of this season that a centre back is maybe even more of a priority than we originally thought. Mm -hmm. So I think this is maybe why uh, we're pushing the boat out for Skriniar. 
I think in the part, first three games of the season, I think our defence has been all over the place again. So I think Skriniar could really re, re, completely rejuvenate our whole defence. All of a sudden, you've got four cl uh, class centre-back options. You've got someone who could maybe develop a really good partnership with Toby. And it's, it's just a very exciting deal. It's a very exciting deal. And, it, and he's someone who Mourinho would love. He's just a pure defender. He doesn't get too bogged down in trying to play out from the back and all that stuff. He is, he has, he is quite good technically, but he defends defends first that's his main attributes and he's a really good defender and he would get into most teams in the Premier League I'm very surprised like I guess City have Ake and Laporte so do he they was, need some... he was linked to City earlier yeah. on the window I'm surprised Peter, like other teams aren't in for him maybe even United they definitely need a centre back at the moment but if we are getting ahead of these these teams and um, getting him over the line that would be a serious serious not only impressive deal but statement of intent because I expected us to not shell out that much for a centre back and clearly that we're looking to improve that position. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, if we are to sign him and get that striker that we're talking about, let's say for arguments like a Milik or a Veghorst or someone like that, what do you think we can achieve this season? I mean, other, the other two, obviously with Chelsea um, signing, all those signings, they're looking very strong. Ch uh, Liverpool are going to be Liverpool. Scoring a hat -trick last night. Yeah, in the League Cup. Uh, Liverpool are always going to be Liverpool. They're going to be strong. City... Um, that you know, there was they sign Ake. If they get another someone else through the door, they're always going to be strong. I really believe that at the moment these signings would definitely make us the fourth best squad in the, at least the fourth best squad in the league. Um, and I think I, we we could really give the top three a good run. I think even we might even be above Chelsea. I tell you why, because although I'm impressed with their Werner Ziyech, um and uh, you know they're they're Havertz. signing and Havertz up front, fair fairly really good signings. Look at their centre back options: Christensen, Zuma, um, Tomori, Rudiger looks like he could be on his way out, yeah. and Silva. Yeah. I think we have better options there. I really do. I think our defence might be stronger. So I think, um, although I'm quite very impressed with Chelsea, I think our our squad definitely stacks up against theirs. So I think top three, I think for sure we could make a very good run of it. I reckon even third, we could we might even be able to finish third. And, and you, you know, never know, maybe an outside title sh title shot, but it's not unlikely. Still. I reckon when you're talking about an outside title shot, I think that comes next season once the squad is proper settled. You've had they've had a year to settle in together, and then next season I think we'll be stronger. But this year, yeah, I think you're right. I think we can finish in the top three. I really think it's within our the kind of realms of possibility. I think when you're looking at Chelsea, they're going to take time to settle in as well. It's, they're not going to hit the ground like, like we've seen already. You mm. know, they've had two games in the Premier League that haven't been great. Um, they've got over the over the line one of them against poor, poor opposition. Against was it Brighton, mm -hmm. um, and then they lost to Liverpool with ten men. And the fact of the matter is, they've made all these signings, but um, you know, is Werner any is Werner better than Kane? Probably not. Is Ziyech better than Son? Like they've made these signings for players who maybe we have that quality already in the squad, and we're adding to that. You know, is are their signings better than people? Someone like Bale, Bale can back back to his best. It remains to be seen. So, I think I've been obviously look. They've had a great window. There's no doubt about it. And they just signed a keeper as well. They're definitely going to be a big big threat. But I think our, our squad. You can't say their squad is definitely 100 percent better than ours. It's definitely comparable. And there's, there's you can definitely argue uh, if we get those signings and we've had just as good a window. Everyone um, commended Liverpool the way they did their transfer business um, a couple years back when they acted with precision got their targets we're doing exactly the same this summer mm -hmm. we are doing exactly the same we're buying top quality players in the positions we needed and look i think it's only good things can come over, over the next few years if we keep acting like the way we are Poch kept saying you know it's going to be a painful rebuild i feel, I feel bad for Poch you know what now. i mean but everything Poch was saying we needed we're doing now mm -hmm. so it's a shame i feel like you know Poch never had a summer like this not once and also, all of a sudden, it's Mourinho's first time and he's getting everything he wants. Because Poch came out the other day and he said when he was there, they were just focused on the stadium, the stadium, the stadium. Now the stadium's built, they can focus on the team. And like the famous words Poch says, you know, um, what, what was it? You can build a house, but you need, you need nice furniture. furniture. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing now. Yeah, but I feel bad for him because yeah, well, you know he he she like it's just a timing thing. He we kind of had a massive dip just before this window, and all of a sudden he's out. Mourinho's in, and Mourinho's getting everything he wants. He Poch, you know, must be looking at this like like with envy of <laughs> what Mourinho's getting because Poch, although like, he had to cope with and kudus and G's and all these lot like yeah. Mourinho's getting Bell and Skriniar and these people. <laughs> it's like oh, Poch, you know, must be tearing his hair out. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, there are reports on the standard yesterday saying that Delhi is going to be staying past the window backing up the claims from Jose Mourinho uh, in his press conference saying he's um, 
what did he say? He's confident or he's certain. He's convinced. He's convinced that uh, Delhi will be staying past the window. Uh, what do you make out of that? Yeah, and so the standards are reporting that um, PSG are set to pull out of negotiations to get Delhi Ali on a season-long loan. So um, maybe Mourinho got that news yesterday before his uh, press conference, and that's why he was so confident of Delhi staying. It looks like, for all intents and purposes, he is going to be staying now. All the talk is kind of uh, quieting down about him leaving. Doesn't look like there's any really offers at the moment for Delhi to leave, and with Mourinho you're saying he's convinced he's going to stay looks like he's going to stay and I for one look, I'm happy about it I, I, I said yesterday I'm not too bothered if he leaves but I'm, if he stays I think it gives us another great option in attack and I think it provides more competition going forward and hopefully um, all the attackers can kind of that internal com- competition which can drive everyone together in terms of putting everyone's numbers up and hopefully when he gets his opportunity Delhi, he's going to feel more the need to take it and to really um, contribute going forward rather than let games drift yeah, and if he can kind of stake a claim this year to to get into the squad, it'll be massive for him. It really would be, and you know, it could contra- it can transform his career the way it's going at the moment. He might go under the radar, but we you know with Bale, Son, Kane, obviously all the focus on that. If Delhi can come in and start performing again, he can really go under the radar. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, let's move on to the late and Orient match. So, as you all know, it was called off the other night as to um, I think there was around eight reports of eighteen uh, first team players at late and Orient going down to. Uh, COVID-19 uh, but it's reported last night I think it's from the standard as well uh, saying that this game is completely off now they've tried to find ways to fit this into the schedule but it looks like it's not going to be happening and it looks like we will be playing Chelsea on Tuesday night um, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in the yeah. next round of the cup it's important to stress that there's nothing official no official word as of yet uh, if the game's been cancelled or rescheduled but the reports from the standard who are quite reliable Dan Kilpatrick usually gets good info that um, any um, that that sorry that the, that the tie is definitely off that's for sure and Tottenham are going to get a bye so it looks like we're in for a mad week if we're playing Chelsea on Tuesday next week um, it remains to be seen how strong the lineup we're even going to field for that tie because you've got Newcastle on the Sunday Chelsea on the Tuesday Europa League on the Thursday if we win tonight and then Man United, and then Man United on the Sunday so I mean it's an absolutely crazy crazy week I don't know how Jose is going to deal with it that's do you four, have an four international games break in a after week. that four games in a week which is it was international week after that which gives a chance for Bell to kind of uh, get fit so hopefully one big push this week if we can get past this week still in all the competitions and um, at least four points out of the Newcastle and United games I think that's a good week and I think we go off into after international break with a maybe with a chance to refresh the squad a bit and um, we're not going to be playing three get four games in a week again so I think it's a very very important week for Tottenham in their season setting everything up I think it's important we stay in each of the competitions obviously mm. the most disposable is probably the Carabao Cup and it's probably the one we're most likely to be knocked out of because of that hard tie but I guess you never know maybe we can step up we've got a big deep squad now and if um, even if resting players I think we can still give Chelsea a game so yeah. Yeah. It's, I know Chelsea are going to be big favourites because they have they don't have Europa League in that midweek so they can play their strongest team but you never know maybe we can give them a good game and uh, and see what see what can happen but we'll see we'll see what happens I maybe think, we'll have a striker back in the, in the th- door yeah, by then hopefully I think it'll be a good game whatever happens whatever kind of teams uh, fill that out because you know you saw Chelsea's lineup last night it was a fairly strong lineup. And even they, um, they can rest players as well and play exactly, a very strong team. Exactly. So both teams can, I think. So yeah. it's going to be an exciting tie. London derby in the cup. Is, is Kane going to be desperate to play that game? We know probably Rugby coming probably, in on Thursday. Uh, but you know, if this game's a draw, goes straight to penalties as well. So it's going to be a very interesting tie. Um, but look, that looks like it's going to be happening. Chelsea at home on Tuesday night in the Carabao Cup. Nothing official yet, but it yeah. looks like that is going to be happening. And also, any talk of Lenoir being screwed over or anything, as I said, we've said in previous videos, Spurs have offered to cover any cost of any lost 100 revenue. 100 to 150 grand, that exactly, is. Exactly, of any lost revenue for Lenoir um, due to their game not being rescheduled. So I think it's a class touch on Spurs. Spurs are trying to hope in it, help in every way they can. It's not. I don't think this is a case of uh, the big club bullying the small club. I think we're trying... We're, this is just a situation we're in and I think we're trying to help in every way we can to help Leighton Orient um, uh, recoup any losses they were going to get because obviously we know how how much this would have affected them as being being them such a league, uh, league to being a small club yeah and also the way you've got to look at it is that letter of the law this game this should have happened anyway so if there was any kind of bad feeling from Spurs saying that you know we should definitely get a bye these conversations wouldn't have been taking place you know they would have made the decision to get the bye from the off kind of thing mm-hmm. so you've got to commend yeah, and Spurs don't have to help as much as they are so I think it's because of the good relationship they have with Lane on there doing all that all they can to help 
Yeah, so good on Tottenham for the way they're doing things. And also the fans, £20,000 yeah, uh, spent yesterday. on um, club shirts. Um, so Fantastic. that's an amazing work from Tottenham fans. Impressed even on Oliver Holt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and let's... <laughs> Oliver Holt. Um, but anyway, let's finish off with Troy Parrott. He made his Millwall debut last night. Everyone very excited to see how he was going to get on. They were playing Premier League opposition in Burnley in the Carabao Cup. Um, he went off injured on the 45th minute mark at half time uh, manager Gary Rowett Wow yeah. Gary Rowett says that um that he got take he got a knock to the ankle early on and he was moving he just wasn't moving right for the whole of the first half and they decided to take him off and it doesn't look good for him they said it's a big blow big blow hopefully he doesn't he's not over too long and he gets a chance but uh, it's a big blow that he had an injury before this game. He had to recover from that um, before starting for getting his first start against Premier League opposition against Burnley. So it was a good chance for him to impress and for him to get injured early doors and to um, get, on get his taken debut. up. Yeah, on his debut, get taken up half time. Big blow for him. I think it's a big blow for most Tottenham fans who want to see, how, to see how he'll get on. It's probably a big blow for Millwall as well. So hopefully he's not out for too long. Hopefully he gets more opportunities later in the season. But it's a bit of a, um, a letdown, a, for the, a bit of a setback for his first game. But what's good quotes from him? He's saying that he's such an honest kid who's desperate to score goals. He he works incredibly hard. Even today when he's struggling, he's, stri he's trying to stay out there. Um, and he's doing it for the right reasons. So, you know, there's good quotes from... Uh, from Gary Rower on on Troy Parrott as well. So hopefully this bodes well for the future. Hopefully he can get back on the pitch very soon and uh, start scoring the goals for Millwall. Yeah, um, so. yeah. So that is it. That is your Tottenham update today. We spoke about the Milan Skriniar links. We spoke about Delhi Ali hopefully staying at Tottenham Hotspur. We spoke about Leighton Orient match being called off and the Chelsea match looks like it's going to be next week and also the Troy Parrott debut for Millwall after unfortunately getting injured but that is your Tottenham update today like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you Spurs, Spurs.